welcome back. Fabio is back again with another Godot web progress report. These changes will show up in Godot version 3.4 as well as the first Godot 4.0 alpha. The big news of this update is that you will be able to export your HTML5 game as a progressive web app. The big advantage of this is that progressive web apps or PWAs are designed to bring a native app-like user experience on phones and tablets. Enabling PWA will generate a few extra files that will need to be distributed along with your game. The various mobile browsers handle installation differently, but once installed, Installed, the web app will be added to the user's home screen and they will be able to start the game like a native app even when offline. In addition, the HTTP debug server was improved by adding SSL support. The HTTP debug servers make it easier to test on different devices by allowing you to run your game in the browser on a device connected to your local network. There is also a progress report on the new Tiles editor coming to Godot 4.0. In case you haven't heard, the Tile system is getting completely redesigned. Auto Tiles are being replaced with what they are calling Terrains. The first new feature to talk about in this update is Terrain Painting. When you're in the Tile Map Painting mode, you can access the Terrain tab which allows you to paint terrains. Similar to what Auto Tile featured, painting a tile in the Terrain mode will also update the surrounding tiles to make the terrains match. The Terrain Painting tool also has a new Probability property that allows you to define if a tile has more of a chance to be chosen as you paint. And you can also paint scenes using the Tile Set Scenes collection source. Another cool feature is the ability to set tile properties en masse. You can select multiple tiles and edit their properties all at once. Or you can simply select a property to edit, set the value, and then paint that value directly on your atlas. Shader Precompiler is a small utility to precompile shaders in order to avoid game stuttering when objects first come into sight and their shaders get lazily compiled. Godot GitLab Issues is a simple interface to create issues in your GitLab board straight from your Godot game. You can use it to gather feedback data from your audience or create bug reports during playtest sessions. Here is a scene in Godot 3.3.2 running at 144Hz on the Valve Index virtual reality headset. Bracer Jack has made this realistic architecture model in Blender. The lighting and reflections are done in Godot 3.3.2. What's cool about this is this is actually running in a web browser. If you want to explore this scene for yourself, I will link the URL in the description. Here is a bullet spawner designed for a bullet hell type game. It has tons of parameters you can adjust to produce some cool effects. In Orbital Deterrent Squadron Invasion, the seven pilots have been scrambled to scout out a long approaching cluster of signals. What could be coming our way to visit Earth? Terra Ventura is an action adventure game set in a fantasy world with RPG elements. This is a sand simulation made with Godot. Each pixel is its own particle of sand and will flow naturally down and around obstacles. Play as a switchboard operator and connect as many calls as you can in your two minute shift on the board in Telephone Trouble. Do you despise playing Scrabble with others? The feeling that everyone knows more words than you? Well now that time is over. Obgoose is a single player, non-competitive Scrabble-like game where no one will ever know when you are obtuse. In Palladium Adventures in Greece, you will play as an archaeologist who is driven by a desire to find an ancient artifact. The hero will travel to Greece to solve riddles and avoid hazardous traps. But he is not the only one who wishes to obtain the treasure. Two other adventurers also arrive at the Forgotten Island. Godot Polygon 2D Fracture Tool is a system to add a polygon fracturing. There are various methods for fracturing, cutting, destroying all forms of polygons. Even textured and scaled polygons are supported. Just use the Godot Polygon 2D node or your own polygons to start adding some destruction to your games. By the way, if you haven't already, go follow me on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash codingkaiju. I mostly livestream game development. If you want something chill to put on in the background, or you want to hang out and talk shop, come drop by and say hi. That's all for you this week. Like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.